everyone, today we're talking to Matthew Sebastiani, who won the National Unsung Hero Award from Crohn's and Colitis Canada. He is heavily involved in raising awareness for the cause and raising funds for the organization, and today he's going to talk to us a little bit about his work. Matthew, congratulations! What does this award mean to you? Yes, thank you. So. I was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis in 2011. And so, yes, I was awarded the National Unsung Hero Award in 2021, which the award is right here. And uh, it was very meaningful for me because it has been 10 years that I've lived with ulcerative colitis. Um, when I was diagnosed, I was in my first year of university. So my story is similar to many people in that uh, diagnosed before the age of 30 is very common. So for me, going into my first year of university and struggling, not knowing what I had and going through you know, procedures and trying to determine what it was, was something um, very you know, challenging and debilitating condition when I was diagnosed with it and having to deal with that. So I did take some time to you know, go through university, finish my degree, and then I wanted to find a community. And that's how I got involved with Crohn's and Colitis Canada. I did my first gutsy walk in 2016, joined the chapter a few months after in 2016, and then became chapter president in 2018. And now still working as the, um, you know, volunteering as the Vancouver chapter president, as well as other initiatives that I spearhead and lead. Talk to us a little bit more about the Gutsy Walk now. Obviously, pre-pandemic, this was a big event, but what have you been doing over the last few years, and is there going to be an event this year? We used to bring 400 to 500 people out to a walk in Vancouver. It's uh, the first Sunday of June. It's a national walk across the country, and there are over 60 locations. So during the pandemic in 2020, we did have to go to a virtual walk, so people can walk anywhere in their community. Uh, this year, we're looking at hybrid. Some, some communities are going to do them in person, so people can join virtually by visiting gutsywalk.ca um, and just participating with others that live with ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease across the country. We don't know if we can have events yet in, in certain regions of the country so we're still waiting to to determine for example we usually have our gala in Vancouver for uh, Crohn's and Colitis Awareness Month which is in November so still waiting to determine if we can safely do that um, but yes Gutsy Walk is the first Sunday of June and it is happening across the country and it's a great initiative raising millions of dollars towards important research for that cure. And how did you get involved with the organization? When I was first diagnosed, I had no idea what ulcerative colitis was. I had no idea inflammatory bowel disease, IBD is Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. And so it was very challenging. No one in my family has it. No one, my friends, no one had it at the time. But as you go on, you start hearing more and more people have it. And so for me, I did go to uh, Crohn'sandcolitis.ca. There's a lot of information at the charity's website a lot of resources, uh, they have webinars, they bring in speakers sometimes to talk about different issues. So for me, it's a it has been a very valuable resource. And then of course, in 2016, when I actually joined Crohn's and Colitis Canada as a volunteer, um, just being able to facilitate some of those resources to other people too. I lead support groups and I would encourage people, you know, there are 40, four, over 40 chapters across the country um, and a lot of them are meeting virtually now. So I know Canada is very big and so there's not, you know, a chapter in every community, but you can join virtually a chapter in your province and I encourage people to do that. But some of the work that I've done is um, I've chaired or co-chaired Gutsy Walk in Vancouver since 2017. We've also held dinner and dance fundraisers. In 2018, we had we had one that was our trial run, our first one. In 2019, we did one that was called the Evening in Venice, where we had almost 200 people raised almost $30,000 in one night. So it was a, a great initiative. Um, the other thing that I do is I'm on the National Volunteer Advisory Committee. So I help the charity um, give some advice on how to improve volunteer engagement, uh, volunteer chapter governance. And the, the thing that I find most impactful for me is the support groups. So I lead support groups in Vancouver where people can come and talk about uh, what they're facing. And in the past, I've also worked with um, the Go Here app, which is almost like the Google Maps of washrooms. The app is available on the App Store 
and really can map people where public washrooms are available. And also I've interfaced with government officials to advocate for patient care and also coverage of medications. So I've been really involved with the charity since 2016 and, um, and look forward to how much more impact I can continue to have as we move forward. Now, obviously, as president of the Vancouver chapter, you've been able to interact with different people from all over the country and who are going through all different stages of their diagnosis. Have you noticed that there is, you know, a significant demographic or different immigrant communities that are also affected by this disease? These conditions really can affect anyone. And what we are seeing is that even though previously this was a very kind of European descent, Western condition that was in high rates, what we are seeing is that since 1990, um, a lot of people in other continents are being diagnosed, whether that's in South America or Africa or Asia, where they weren't as prevalent, they are now. And Canada actually has the highest incidence rates of these conditions in the world. There are 300,000 Canadians that live with Crohn's or colitis. We're also seeing the incidence rates in children increasing in the last 15 years by 50%. So a lot of kids, um, you know, like I said earlier, you know, more than uh, more diagnosis than those under 30. So whether it's kids, teenagers, but we are seeing um, that it does affect anyone. And as we move into the 21st century, that these are conditions that really manifest themselves in any geographic region and in any ethnicity. And why is it so important for people to, to have awareness and to know, you know where to look for help or what resources are available? Crohn's and Colitis Canada, their promise is to um, cure Crohn's disease or find a cure for Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis and improve the lives of those that live with these conditions. And the reason is, is because there is no known cause and no known cure. So really people have to live with these conditions which are challenging. They're what I can, you know, consider invisible conditions. So with awareness, it really helps to uh, connect with other people in the community and let them know that they're not alone suffering in silence because a lot of people do they consider these you know washroom issues there's a social taboo that surrounds these conditions and when people are in an active flare some people do feel uncomfortable to even leave their house because some people use the washroom you know 20 or more times a day and they're scared that when they go into public that they might not find a washroom available so Increasing awareness helps to give that platform to let people know that people do have these conditions, that they're not alone. And also it's really about helping people escape that social isolation while also trying to advocate with stakeholders and government to raise awareness so that we can build communities where people can engage and thrive in them and also bring down those barriers to really create accessible communities for everyone that lives with visible or invisible disabilities. Thank you so much, Matthew, and once again, congratulations on being the National Unsung Hero.